Hello everyone, thank you for joining. I'm Kylie Degatano. I work in the Broad Institute Data Sciences Platform as a software product manager of our omics analysis pipelines. My background is in large-scale sequencing data processing, and I'm excited to share some of that work with you today as I introduce you to WARP, our new public repository of cloud-optimized workflows for biological data processing. In the Data Sciences Platform, our pipelines team of software engineers and computational biologists is dedicated to collaborating with scientific experts to build, optimize, and maintain workflows to support the Broad and other projects production analysis of biological data. Recently, we have released our collection of OMIC cloud analysis pipelines in a public GitHub repository called WARP, which we backronymed Whittle Analysis Research Pipelines. Our WARP pipelines are open source, follow GA4GH standards, and are written in Whittle, the workflow definition language. A little disclaimer, we're confident in releasing these pipelines as top quality to the best of our knowledge and in-depth validations, but they're not the only way to do analysis of these data types. The field is constantly evolving and we're often building for a general user with standardized run settings for production, so we know that we sacrifice the pipelines covering every analysis use case. Today, I'm looking forward to telling you about the evolution of WARP and how we've made it sustainable, balancing delivering scientific value with maintainability. I'll spend most of this talk diving into the details of WARP, but first and foremost, I want to emphasize why we do what we do. We've built WARP to enable scientific research, not just at the Broad, but throughout any of the community interested in reusing our pipelines. There has long been demand for pipeline reuse across institutions, within large omics projects, and across projects to facilitate large-scale downstream analyses. For example, early on we defined the concept of functional equivalence for our human genome processing, which helps us stay in step with other large-scale sequencing centers without the need to use the exact same code across institutions. If you're interested in learning more about functional equivalence, I encourage you to catch the recording of my colleague Michael Gatson's talk, which was just before this one. The pipelines in WARP or their predecessors have powered many of the recent large-scale projects in the United States. On the opposite end of the scale spectrum, when made accessible to the community, the same production quality pipelines that can process hundreds of thousands of samples can also empower individual scientists in their own research. We were so proud to see a WARP pipeline used recently by a citizen scientist, a father seeking to understand the genetic cause of his daughter's autism. WARP was born out of a need to support data processing for the Broad Genomics platform. Our sequencing platform pumps out hundreds of genomes and exomes every day, amounting to over 45 terabytes of data per day. And the Institute overall is currently managing about 35 petabytes of data stored in the cloud. For over a decade, the platform has continued to push us to develop better ways to scale to more data. We started moving our genomics processing to the cloud a bit over six years ago, and what we've learned along the way has been the foundation to how we develop WARP pipelines now. The idea for WARP was started in 2019. We pulled together multiple efforts from across the Broad Data Sciences platform to unify our production pipeline development. At that time, Broad production pipelines were in private repositories. The pipelines sometimes had Broad infrastructure specific steps like writing to databases. They did use mainly open source and public tools, but the code connecting them was private, sparingly documented, and not nearly reproducible enough or transparent enough to the consumers of the data that we produced. At that time, colleagues had been copying some of the cloud production pipelines into a public repository for GATK best practices pipelines. This made clear the obvious impact of publicly sharing pipelines. We learned the value of documentation and support, building community, and what it takes for ease of use. We developed a vision of a single repository of production pipelines that is public and open source, enables provenance and scientific reproducibility, is transparent and easy to use, and supports an open source community around pipelines. The first big decision we had to make was whether we wanted to build one repository of pipelines or a GitHub org with a repository per pipeline. There are pros and cons to both approaches. Neither is perfect, and both have been tried with pipelines across the community. We rely on shared tasks across our pipelines to maintain consistency, and this led us to build one repository. The decision to make one pipeline repository with shared tasks has some implications around pipeline testing and releasing that I will describe later in the presentation. So, WARP began with these four goals. Let's dive into how we've tackled these goals as we build out WARP. 
First, the steps taken to be public and open source. This part was a lot of logistics. We chose a license and had to move the code, tools, dockers, build scripts, test data, genome references, all into public spaces. In that process, we merged multiple repositories and deprecated years of old unused code. Multiple tools we had maintained privately were moved into the public bioinformatics software package, Picard. In a few circumstances, we had to refactor the pipelines that had steps specific to Broad infrastructure baked in. We removed those from our scientific pipelines and put them in wrappers. We also put significant effort into creating documentation, which I will detail more later. Next, what we've done to enable clearer provenance and scientific reproducibility. It's important to us that our pipelines enable scientific reproducibility. So far, we have invested in a few areas that support this vision. Pipeline testing and review, versioning and releasing. Supporting these features can add significant overhead in pipeline development and maintenance. In the upcoming sections, I'll alternate explaining how these features appear to researchers and how we make supporting them sustainable for pipeline developers. I'll use these icons to clarify on each slide. We want researchers to be able to trust our pipelines and we want to feel confident in the continued scientific quality of them. Each released pipeline has a scientific owner who reviews PRs to that pipeline and helps to investigate test failures. Additionally, we have implemented automated plumbing and scientific tests for each pipeline. The tests are looking for exact matches in the scientific outputs. This helps guarantee that releases don't impact the scientific results unless intended. Pipe plumbing tests are as quick as possible while still testing all steps in the pipeline and run on PRs to develop. Scientific tests run on the promotion from develop to staging and are on full size samples. Multiple samples are chosen for the scientific tests to catch different edge cases in the data like high contamination or low coverage. With many released pipelines in one repo, there was concern about the overhead of testing all of them and dealing with possibly transient and unrelated failures on each PR. To facilitate efficient development, we implemented SMART tests. Now the test runner checks which pipelines have been changed in the PR, including any changes in shared tasks that affect more than one pipeline and may not have been the target of the PR. Only the tests for the changed pipelines run on that PR. We also try to balance our need for thorough review with efficient development. In addition to engineering review, we use pull approve to automatically request the review of the scientific owner of any changed pipeline in the PR. Nags on the PRs help anyone working in the repo to stick to our development processes. A first key step for a researcher to track provenance is to have a semantic version for each pipeline we release. A researcher wants to be able to tell if data processed with two different pipeline versions are compatible. So we decided on a set of policies for our semantic versioning to help clarify the scientific compatibility of different pipeline versions. The major, minor, and patch version numbers still represent standard software semantic versioning, but we additionally choose the version number based on changes in the scientific outputs. Major version changes on a pipeline may indicate a need to reprocess old data. A researcher with a history of data they've already processed with an older version may want to continue using a previous version or a compatible version for their scientific research. The key is avoiding changes in the pipeline that are significant enough that the processing introduces batch effects that cloud the true biological signal. For further information about the changes in each release, we maintain a change log for each pipeline. Adding semantic versioning means that developers in Warp need to remember to change the version for each pipeline as they're updated, including pipelines that are using any changed shared tasks. The version number is in the pipeline code itself and output from the pipeline so that it can be used in metadata for tracking provenance. When incrementing a pipeline version, a corresponding change log for each pipeline needs a new entry. GitHub validation checks confirm that the pipeline version and change log for each changed pipeline in a PR have been updated and that they match. To make it easier for a researcher to use the pipelines, each pipeline is then packaged into its own GitHub release named by the pipeline name with the semantic version number. We include release notes to describe the changes in the new version. Everything required to run the pipeline is attached as an asset. The con of this approach is we already have 139 releases and GitHub doesn't provide search. If a pipeline hasn't been updated in a while, its latest release could be buried multiple pages back. 
We link to the latest release of each pipeline in the documentation, and we're looking into ways to improve the user experience. The package releases are automatically created upon merge to main branch. The automation pulls the pipeline name and version number from the top level Whittle directly. The release notes are populated with the latest entry in the change log. Because we have multiple pipelines in work, the source code automatically attached by GitHub to the release contains code for many pipelines that the researcher downloading this release may not care about. The automation packages additional assets for ease of use, including the top level workflow, the runtime options we use, and a zip of all required sub workflows and tasks for that pipeline. And it finds those by using the imports in the code itself. All of that automation and provenance tracking is great, but means very little if the pipelines are not transparently well documented and easy to use. We've invested in providing documentation for developers and researchers on our WARP documentation site. Most release pipelines now have detailed documentation that covers information about the scientific steps of the pipeline, the tools used, the inputs, outputs, and how to run it. We continue to create documentation for new pipelines and pipelines that were previously undocumented. I'm especially excited about our pre-written method sections. We've published method sections for most pipelines on our documentation site. Our hope is that this will help researchers with writing their papers that cite our pipelines. For developers, we have documentation on navigating warp, how we approach pipeline development, and our repository's requirements for testing, versioning, and releasing pipelines. We also continue to expand our contributions guidelines. Next, I'll briefly cover three ways to find and use WARP pipelines. The first is to download a GitHub release and run the pipeline on one of many supported computing platforms. Although WARP pipelines are optimized for Google Cloud, they should be runnable on platforms like the local desktop, HPC, LSF, SGE, and Slurm. To date of recording, users have downloaded WARP pipelines almost 1,400 times since our launch. Docstore is a GA4GH compliant open platform for sharing and finding Docker-based tools like Whittle Pipelines and facilitates launching pipelines in, a multi in multiple cloud analysis platforms. We use the Docstore GitHub app to automatically release WARP pipelines to Docstore. Lastly, WARP pipelines are shared in easily reusable workspaces in Terra, a scalable cloud platform for supporting biomedical research. WARP pipeline workspaces can be found by searching for the WARP pipelines tag. Even if you don't plan to use Terra or the cloud for your analysis long term, the WARP pipeline workspaces are an easy way to check out the pipelines in action. Each fully reusable workspace has public example data, recommended configurations, and example runs that may be a helpful reference as you begin to use the pipelines. Lastly, our efforts on engaging with the community. We've been working to increase our engagement with the broader community of pipeline developers and users. Each pipeline we develop is done in collaboration with a scientist or lab who is an expert in the data type, and we've worked with labs at many institutions in multiple countries. Where possible, we collaborate with tool developers to use open source tools and request features rather than build our own. Where there aren't standards in file formats, we test to confirm our outputs are compatible with popular downstream tools and publish specs. As we've talked about warp more, we've begun to receive emails, issues, pull requests, and new pipelines from folks outside of our team and the Broad. We've just published contributions guidelines for contributing to existing pipelines, including a full tutorial. We will expand this to cover contributing a new pipeline soon. Our Google Analytics on our documentation site shows 1,400 visitors around the world in the last six months, and we're eager to engage. We are excited to continue to improve WARP. Some artifacts of the past haven't been cleaned up yet as we balance pipeline development and repository improvements. You can see in the screenshot from a PR that we've brought multiple testing infrastructures into WARP as we merged repos, and one isn't smart. So all of those pipeline tests still run on every PR. We're in the process of choosing one test infrastructure that is smart and open to contributors outside of Broad. In addition to these repository improvements, we are always optimizing current pipelines for more scale or lower cost, developing new pipelines, and facilitating pipeline contributions into WARP. We're especially excited about upcoming optimizations of our joint genotyping pipeline to support larger scale call sets, our new SlideSeq pipeline, which is our first foray into single cell spatial transcriptomics, 
and the contribution of a clinically validated genotype imputation pipeline that will bring us closer to supporting translational research. A couple of years ago, I had a vision, but we all know that means nothing without an incredible team to bring it into reality. Here are my co-authors, the team of computational biologists, software engineers, and documentation specialists supporting WARP today. Though not on the pipeline team, the vision of WARP was refined over many conversations with co-author Geraldine. I am personally grateful for her enthusiastic encouragement to build WARP. Over the years, we've had incredible support and contributions from so much of the Broad Institute and within the data sciences platform. We're also indebted to our collaborators, funders, and our team alumni for their contributions and incredible collaboration. Here are some quick links for your convenience if these slides are shared. I'm always happy to connect. Please don't hesitate to reach out to my email. Thank you, and I'm happy to take questions.